Look at that drag! Hello everyone, and welcome to my gnome restaurant guide. This is a guide I've been wanting to make for a while, I really like playing this game. Well, let's just jump right on into it. So here's a list of everything that I will be discussing within this video, and they all have annotations that you can click on to take you to that part of the video. I will be talking about the requirements and recommendations for this, how the game works via a quick summary, best setup, this includes the gear, your inventory, and how your bank spaces should be set up, all of the possible food and drink combinations you will need to use, which there are 20 of, all hard delivery locations, this will include where each gnome is located, the fastest way to get to them, and the fastest way to get back to get a new delivery. Tips and tricks. Now, these tips and tricks will give you the most profit and the best efficiency. And then finally, the profit. This is the results from my 6 hour test. Requirements and recommendations. The following quests are required to get to some of the people that you have to deliver to. So it is highly suggested that you have all of these quests done. Monkey Madness, Fishing Contest, Troll Romance, and The Giant Dwarf. You will also need 66 magic to get to one of the deliveries, which is inside of the Magic Guild. Recommendations. The following quests are recommended for a lot faster teleport system. Plague City for the Argdone teleport, Watchtower for the Watchtower teleport, Edgar's Roos for the Trollheim teleport, One Small Favor to use the glider to the Feldup Hills, and Tree Gnome Village. This will allow you access to the Spirit Tree network. How the game works slash quick summary. You will be running food and drink deliveries to gnomes around Gilinor. You have the choice of hard tasks or easy tasks. Easy tasks are not recommended because they give junk rewards, whereas the hard task can give you Grand Tree Sea Pods, Gnome Goggles, and best of all, the Gnome Scarf. If you forget what your order is, you can always click on the delivery box that is in your inventory to remind yourself of what you need. After you receive your task, you have to take the specified gnome the food or drink that they want. This item must be made by yourself. You cannot use the food or drink items that are purchasable from the bartender or servers within the Grand Tree. The faster you deliver, the better your tip it will be. So it is suggested that you deliver their food or drink as fast as possible. All of the ingredients can be purchased within the Grand Exchange or found within the stores at the Grand Tree with the exception of kingworms and toad legs. These can be pickpocketed from gnomes or looted off the ground just northwest of the Grand Tree. So, in my opinion, here is what the best inventory, gear, and bank should look like. For your gear, you are going to want to have a ring of dueling, a staff that counts for two types of runes. This is just a decoration on top of my steam staff. It actually is just a regular mystic steam battle staff. It has the same stats, but it counts for fire runes and water runes. So whatever two types of elemental runes that your staff has, you're going to want to have the other two types in your inventory along with wall runes, monkey gree gree, narda teleports, and tireless run scrolls. It is also highly suggested you take a wicked hood and an amulet of glory. Weight reduce equipment isn't really required because you're going to be using a terror bird anyways. So yeah, it's highly suggested you take a terror bird. Inside of your bank, you are going to want to have every single piece of food that somebody can ask for pre-made already. This includes seven different cocktails, five different batas, four different bowls, and four crunchies. So we'll get on to getting a delivery. You want to talk to Jean and get a hard delivery. Never do the easy ones, it's just, it's not suggested. And it is always suggested to do every single hard delivery because the longest one can take is two minutes, whereas if you decline one, you will have a penalty time of five minutes. For this example, I will be doing Gakor. You want to run to the bank, and he wanted worm crunchies. So, I will find in here, I already know where my crunchies are, and I can see that this has worms on it, so I will click this. Then, as soon as you get to the person you are delivering to, click on them, and then click back on the ground. This skips the whole chat, and just gets you straight to your tip that you will get from them. Then you want to take the quickest route back, which is generally by the spirit trees, 
You could use the Grand Tree Sea Pods, but it is unadvised because it's a waste of 10k. Whereas this teleport method back takes, what, 10 seconds longer and cost me so much, so much less. So, so much less. So, it is highly suggested on your way back that before you get a new delivery, talk to the gnome waiter. You want to purchase 10 pre-made chocolate bombs. Now, I know you cannot use the pre-made items that you purchase from here for deliveries, but PKers use these when PKing because it, it, they just, you can combo and eat with them real quick. So it is highly suggested you do that because every one of these you purchase will give you like 1.5k profit. And then you would also want to run over here to, to, um, Hudo and just buy some ingredients. This way, the next time you have to make ingredients, you already have a large quantity of ingredients. Now, I know Hudo's shop does restock, and so does the other bartender, but the pre-made items don't restock. So, quickly, I will purchase some chocolate bars and, let's see, some equal leaves. Now, I will have to eat one of these so I have an inventory spot. Go back over here, and... We'll ignore this. <laughs> Go back over here and get a new delivery. So, quickly again, you will run to the bank, deposit all of the said items, take out the selected food, and do your delivery. And on your way back, don't forget to buy some stuff from the shop. On screen, I have the names of all the possible food items, cocktails, and gnomes. Now, if you click on any of these, for the gnomes, it will show you where they are located, the fastest way to get there, and the fastest way to get back. For all the food, it will show you a small, tiny tutorial on how to make that said piece of food. Also, at any time, you can click on the button in the top right inventory while viewing all of those things to get back to this list. For a wormhole, First, you begin by taking your gene dough and put it inside of the gnome bowl mold. <laughs> you bake the gnome bowl mold and then open up the inventory option. You will need to have four king worms, two onions, and a spice in your inventory. Click on this. This will give you a half made bowl. Use the half made bowl on the gnome cooker and then use the unfinished bowl with the equal leaves. For a vegetable bowl, you will need two onions, two potatoes, equal leaves, gnome spice, gene dough, and a gnome ball mold. Use the gene dough on the mold to get a raw gnome ball. Cook that to get a half-baked bowl. Open up the menu, make a veggie ball. This gives you a half-made bowl. Use the half-made bowl on the stove, and use the unfinished bowl on the equal leaves. Tangled toad legs. You will need four toad legs, two pieces of cheese, dwell berries, equal leaves, gene dough, gnome ball mold, and a gnome spice. Use the dough on the mold, use the <laughs> raw gnome ball on the stove, click on the half baked, click the tangled toad legs, and all you have to do with this is simply bake it. You don't have to do any preparations after cooking it. This is for a chocolate bomb. You will need gene dough, a gnome ball mold, four chocolate bars, chocolate dust, two pots of cream, and equal leaves. Use the dough on the mold, the raw gnome bowl on the gnome cooker, click on the half-baked bowl, click on the chocolate bomb, use the half-made bowl on the gnome cooker, and use the unfinished bowl on the chocolate dust or the pad of cream. For a fruit batter, you will need gene dough, a bat of tin, four equal leaves, a pineapple, an orange, a lime, and a gnome spice. Use the gene dough on the bata tin, use the raw bata on the gnome cooker, then you will need to slice your pineapple, slice your orange, and slice your lime all into chunks. Then click on the half-baked batter, click on the fruit batter, use the half-made batter on the gnome cooker, and use your spice on the unfinished batter. Toad batter. You will need toad legs, batter tin, equal leaves, jean dough, cheese, and gnome spice. Use the batter tin on the raw dough, use the raw batter, on the gnome cooker, click on the half-baked batter, click toad batter, then you will use this on the gnome cooker. Worm batter. You will need jean dough, equal leaves, batter tin, cheese, king worms, and gnome spice. 
use the gene dough on the tin, the tin on the cooker, then click on the half-baked batter, select the worm batter, then click that onto the stove again, and garnish with equal leaves. Vegetable batter. You will need a jean dough, a batter tin, two tomatoes, one dwell berries, an onion, cheese, cabbage, and equal leaves. Use the jean dough on the batter tin. Use the raw batter on the gnome cooker. Click on the half-baked batter and select the vegetable batter. Then use the half-made batter back on the gnome cooker and the unfinished garnish with equal leaves. The cheese and tomato batter. You will need jean dough, batter tin, one tomato, one cheese, and one equal leaves. Use the jean dough on the batter tin. Use the batter tin on the gnome cooker. Click on the half-baked batter. Click on the cheese and tomato. Use this on the gnome cooker and garnish with equal leaves. Toad crunchies. You will need a crunchy tray, jean dough, two toad legs, gnome spice, and equal leaves. Use the dough on the crunchy tray to get raw crunchies. Use the raw crunchies on the gnome cooker to get half-baked crunchy. Click on the half-baked crunchy and select the toad crunchies. Then use the half-made crunchies back on the gnome cooker. And finally, garnish with equal leaves. Spicy crunchies. You will need two equal leaves, a crunchy tray, jean dough, and gnome spice. Use the jean dough on the crunchy tray. Use the raw crunchies on the gnome cooker. Click on the half-baked crunchies and select the spicy crunchy. Then use the on the gnome cooker and use the unfinished with the spice. Worm crunchies. You will need jean dough, crunchy tray, equal leaves, gnome spice, and two king worms. Use the jean dough on the tray. Use the raw crunchies on the gnome cooker. Click on the half-baked crunchies. Select the worm crunchies. Use these back on the gnome cooker and garnish with spice. Choco chip crunchies. You will need jean dough, crunchy tray, chocolate dust, two chocolate bars, and gnome spice. Use the jean dough on the tray, the tray on the gnome cooker. Click on the half to bake crunchies, select choco chip crunchies. Then <laughs> use these back on the gnome cooker and garnish with chocolate dust. For a fruit blast, you will need a cocktail shaker, a cocktail glass, one pineapple, two lemons, and an orange. Click on the cocktail shaker and select the fruit blast. Then you will need to slice this lemon in two lemon slices. Then click on the mixed blast and it will pour into the cocktail glass. Pineapple punch. You will need three pineapples, two oranges, a lime, and a lemon. A cocktail glass and a cocktail shaker. Click the cocktail shaker and select the pineapple punch. After you have done this, you will need to slice the orange into slices, slice the pineapple into chunks, and slice the lime into chunks. Then click on the pour, and you will pour that into the pineapple. <laughs> okay, yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> Wizard Blizzard. You will need two bottles of vodka, a bottle of gin, two limes, a lemon, an orange, and a pineapple. Click on the cocktail shaker and select Wizard Blizzard. Next, you will need to dice your pineapple into chunks and slice your lime into slices. And simply click back on the cocktail shaker. Short green guy, you will need a cocktail glass, cocktail shaker, four limes, equal leaves, and a bottle of vodka. Click the cocktail shaker and select short green guy. Then you will need to slice your lime into slices and then click back on the cocktail shaker. A drunk dragon is one of the tricky drinks to make. You will need a cocktail shaker, cocktail glass, bottle of vodka, bottle of gin, dwell berries, pineapple, and a pot of cream. Click on your cocktail shaker and select the drunk dragon. Next, you will need to pour this into a cocktail glass. You will need to then slice the pineapple into chunks, click back on the mixed dragon, and this will add these other two ingredients inside of it. Then you will need to use the mixed dragon on a gnome cooker to heat it. The Choco Saturday. <laughs> this is another one of those tricky drinks. You will need a cocktail glass, cocktail shaker, 
bottle of whiskey, a chocolate bar, equal leaves, bucket of milk, chocolate dust, and a pot of cream. Click on the cocktail shaker. Stupid yak. Click on the cocktail shaker. Select the choco or chocolate Saturday. Then pour and use this on the gnome cooker. Then garnish. Blurberry special. This takes quite a lot of ingredients. You will need a bottle of vodka, bottle of brandy, bottle of gin, three lemons, two oranges, a lime, equal leaves, cocktail glass, and a cocktail shaker. Click on the cocktail shaker and then select the blurberry special. Next, you will need to slice your orange into chunks, slice your lime into chunks, and then slice your Oh, slice your lemon into chunks, and slice your lime into slices. Then you can pour. <laughs> Ooh, that's quite extensive. This gnome is the Ambassador Fairnook. He's located on the first floor of the Vrock Palace. The fastest way to get to him is the Vrock Teleport. The fastest way back to get a new task is the Mobilizing Army's Teleport, to the spirit tree, to the tree gnome stronghold. This gnome is Ambassador Jimblewap, located on the first floor of the Argdone Castle. The fastest way to get there is the Argdone Teleport, and then run west. The fastest way back is the Mobilizing Army's Teleport, to the spirit tree, to the tree gnome stronghold. This gnome is Ambassador Spanfipple, <laughs> located on the first floor of Falador Castle. The fastest way to get to him is the Falador Teleport, then run south into the castle up to the first floor. The fastest way back is the Mobilizing Armies Teleport to the Spirit Tree to the Tree Gnome Stronghold. This gnome is Brambrickle. Brambrickle is located on the Trolley's Mountain. The fastest way to get to him is through the Trollheim Teleport, then you want to run northwest all the way till you hit the cave. Then, run north through the cave and exit at the crevice. He should be located just on the outside of the crevice. The fastest way back is the Mobilizing Army's Teleport to the Spirit Tree to the Tree Gnome Stronghold. This gnome is Captain Belmedge, located on the top of White Wolf Mountain. The fastest way to get to him is to take the glider to the White Wolf Mountain, and the fastest way back would be to take the glider back to the Grand Tree. This gnome is Captain Derkin. Derkin is located on the top of the duel arena. The fastest way to get to Derrickin is to take the ring of dueling to the duel arena, then run east up the stairs and continue to go east. The fastest way back is the mobilizing army's teleport, then take the spirit tree, then take that to the tree gnome stronghold. This gnome is Captain Dauber. Dauber is located at the Alcarid gnome glider. The fastest way to get to him is the gnome glider to Alcarid, and the fastest way back is the gnome glider back to the Grand Tree. This gnome is Captain Kemmelfoodle. <laughs> Captain Kemmelfoodle is located at the Karamja gnome glider. The fastest way to get to him is the Karamja gnome glider, and the fastest way back is the gnome glider back to the Grand Tree. This gnome is Captain Ninto. Ninto is located under the White Wolf Mountain. The fastest way to get to Ninto is to take the house teleport to Taverly, then go into the cave just north of the house portal. The fastest way back is to take the mobilizing army's teleport to the spirit tree to the tree gnome stronghold. This gnome is Gorkar. Gorkar is located in the northeast part of Apatol behind Awalgagi. <laughs> The fastest way to get there is to teleport to Apatol, quickly put on your monkey gree gree, go down the stairs, and run southeast. The fastest way back is the Mobilizing Army's teleport to the Spirit Tree to the Tree Gnome Stronghold. This gnome is GLO Karnok, located at the only house at the shipyard on Karamja. The fastest way to get to him is to take the gnome glider to Karamja, then run north to the shipyard. The fastest way back is the Mobilizing Army's Teleport to the Spirit Tree to the Tree Gnome Stronghold. This gnome is Ganderum Alvrafrum, <laughs> located at the Felda Pills Gnome Glider. The fastest way to get to him is 
the gnome glider to Feldup Hills, and the fastest way back is the gnome glider to the tree gnome stronghold. This gnome is Hazelmere. Now unfortunately after a certain quest you are uneligible to get Hazelmere. He's located inside of the house east of Yanil. The fastest way to get to him is the fairy ring code CLS. The fastest way back is the mobilizing army's teleport to the spirit tree to the tree gnome stronghold. This gnome is King Borlin. Borlin is located in the tree gnome village. The fastest way to get there is the mobilizing armies teleport to the spirit tree to the tree gnome village. Then the fastest way back is just to take the spirit tree right next to where you're already located. This gnome is Lieutenant Schlepper. Schlepper is located just on the outside of the tree gnome village. The fastest way to get there is to take the mobilizing armies teleport to the spirit tree to the tree gnome village. Go west and squeeze through the fence. Follow Elkoi. Elkoi will take you just outside of the tree gnome village, and Lieutenant Schlepper is just north of where you will end up. The fastest way to get back is the mobilizing army's teleport to the spirit tree to the tree gnome stronghold. This gnome is Penwai. Penwai is located west of the gnome glider on Karamja. The fastest way to get there is the gnome glider to Karamja, then run west. The fastest way back is the gnome glider to the grand tree. This gnome is Professor Iberon, located inside of the Magic Guild in Yanil. The fastest way to get there is the Watchtower Teleport and then run east. The fastest way back is the Mobilizing Armies Teleport to the Spirit Tree to the Tree Gnome Stronghold. This gnome is Professor Manglethrope, located on the west side of the Keldegrim Hall. The fastest way to get there is to take the Mobilizing Armies Teleport to the Spirit Tree, then take the Spirit Tree to the Grand Exchange, Run west to the trap door and take the cart to Keldegram. Once at Keldegram, run north into the hall. Go up the stairs on the southeast side and then continue to run west and go down the stairs on the southwest side. He will be located just north of the bottom of the southwest stairs. The fastest way back is the mobilizing army's teleport to the spirit tree to the tree gnome stronghold. This gnome is Professor Anglewhip, located in the wizard's tower. The fastest way to get to him is to take the Wicked Hood teleport, then go down the stairs. He should either be inside of the building, and if he's not, he's on the outside. The fastest way back is the Mobilizing Army's teleport to the Spirit Tree to the Tree Gnome Stronghold. This gnome is Wingstone. Wingstone is located southwest of Narda. A Narda teleport scroll is the fastest way to reach him, then run west. The fastest way back is the Mobilizing Army's teleport to the Spirit Tree to the Tree Gnome Stronghold. You will receive reward points for every completed delivery. Easy deliveries give you one point, hard deliveries give you three. So that means every four hard deliveries you will gain 12 points and 12 points gives you a token. The tokens do stack per se because if I check this it says you can use this token to order gnome food to deliver. You currently currently have 10. So I have 10 built up and that's the max. If I go to talk to um, Jean she says, um, clearly you are a very hard worker. I think you need a holiday. Collect all the tokens. You have collected all of the tokens I can give you. Of course, if you use up your tokens, you can come back to do some more deliveries. So, yeah. Basically, you're able to do more while you have your max, but it's stupid because you want to build these up. And, um, yeah, I'll show you in one second. Let me get to a different place. <laughs> oh. I'm going to stand right here and you can activate it and it says you have made your order please be patient while the gnome finds you pop up on like a bird right here delivery for famous drops <laughs> so you get 10 random pieces of food and the nice convenient thing about this is this is food you can still use so it's 10 pieces of food you don't have to make so just as a quick tip on that, always use up those tokens when they get maxed. Another quick tip I would like to point out is you can buy all of the items from the Grand Exchange that you have to make. So let's see, Tangled Toad Legs. And we are going to learn why this is unsuggested. I'm going to put an offer in for 50k and see if I can buy any. Yeah, bought for 4k, but I can make them for so much cheaper by myself. Oh, so 
that's that. It is unsuggested that you use the grand seed pods to get back to do another delivery. Because I can... Okay, so I'll just show you this for an example. If I do launch this. So, he takes me on the glider. Now, this takes me to the top. They also have a squash option that will take me to the very bottom of the grand tree. But it is unadvised because with the level 10 teleport to mobilizing armies, I can get right next to this tree. And with this, I can click on the gnome stronghold and then simply run right north. It takes me right here, essentially in almost the same amount of time. Whereas this only cost me, what, 250 coins, whereas those Grand Tree Seed Pods are 10k. So it is unadvised to use the Grand Tree Seed Pods. Now there are only two people that will give you the Gnome Scar for Gnome Goggles. This is Captain Nitto and Captain Derrickin. So I'm going to get a delivery from her. And, oh, it's Wingstone. Wingstone can give you the Snake Flute, just BT dubs. <laughs> But so say I'm like, yeah, I don't really care. I don't want this. I'm going to wait out the five minutes. So, yes, yes, I don't want this. So, I'm going to wait out five minutes. I'm going to set a timer. And in the five minutes that I'm waiting for another delivery, I can sit here and make food. And with that with that uh, five-minute timer, it's it's very convenient because I can go get another... I can just keep doing this until I get the ones I want, or until I have enough food where I can just run a bunch of deliveries. So, it is highly suggested to play this way as well. So, here are the results from my original six hours of doing this. This was with me not having much knowledge of how this game works at all, and kind of figuring out for it myself. So I felt like it was a, it's a good, um, it's a good little show of how much somebody who's new at this can make. Note, I did not buy anything from the... I did not buy any pre-made chocolate bombs. Somebody actually told me about that, like, right as I was making this guide. So, if I did buy that, that'd be an extra whole lot of money that you would have made added on top of this. So, let me fast forward to me with price checking all this. Here is all the extra food I had left over. Note, I did have some tomatoes prior to this, <laughs> but if I did price check all this, this would probably be a few hundred K if I could sell it all too. These mint cakes, please be expensive. Oh, they're only... <laughs> okay, this is a slight letdown. I thought these were a bit more expensive. I know these goggles are crap cheap. Then I did get 181 of these. Holy crap, look at that. Those are 10K each. And then two gnome scarfs. So in six hours of playing this, I made a whopping nine mil. That's pretty freaking good. Like, that's that's pretty good. Like, that's like 1.5 mil an hour. Nice. I actually do like this. It's a shame that trimmed comp doesn't require you to do more of this, or I'd be having a blast getting trim. Well, I guess this is really it for this guide. I cannot believe I just made a 30 minute guide. This guide took me like five days. Holy. Well, if you guys want to see more awesomely epic guides with massive annotations, you know, if you subscribe, I try to post these at least one guide a week. If there's anything you want me to make a guide about, please post in the comments below. I will try my hardest to make it. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching my videos and have a great day.